Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture we're going to look at calculus with parametric curves. Now we're going to revisit the idea of computing area, arc length, and surface area, but now in the context of parametrized curves. You were first introduced to parametric curves in Calculus 1, and there we introduced what a parametric curve is, and we also looked at computing tangent lines to various points on the curve. We're going to revisit the tangent lines to points on the curve and just review it here. But as for the concept of what a parametric curve is and some basic examples, I'm not going to do that here. It was covered in Calculus 1, so if you want a quick refresher or if you perhaps come to us transferring from another institution that just didn't cover it in Calculus 1, then I highly recommend you watch the video lecture where we cover the basics of parametric curves for Calculus 1. I'll put the link in the description below this video. Okay, some other things that we'll be using in this lecture that I think it would be good if you just refreshed your memory with are arc length and areas of surfaces of revolutions. So those were the previous two lectures to this one. So if you haven't watched those already, make sure you watch those before continuing this with this lecture because we are going to be using those ideas. All right, so let's just dive right into it with an example. So in this problem, we are looking to compute the arc length of one arch of a cycloid, and we're also asked to find the area under this arch. So let's just quickly refresh our memories with what a cycloid is. So a cycloid is obtained by taking a circle and identifying a point on it. So here you see a red point at the origin, and letting the circle roll without slipping. And then we watch what curve that point traces out. The resulting curve is known as a cycloid, and we're interested in just one of those arches of the cycloid, what is the length, and also what is the area under it. So how do we go about calculating this? So arc length, what is our arc length? Well, we proceed like we did before. The arc length, with which we denote by little s, is the integral along the curve, so this would be from x equals zero, all the way to x equals 2 pi r. Now you'll find in this section my upper and lower limits of integration. I will sometimes use the variable name in them just to emphasize what variable those values are related to. So here it's going from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi r of the arc length differential. So that's how arc length was essentially defined. So the details, of course, are hidden into that in that arc length differential. Now, what is that? The arc length differential depends on how you've represented your curve. If we were just looking at a curve like y equals f of x, then our arc length differential would be the square root of 1 plus the square of the derivative of f, and then a dx hanging on the end, if that's our variable. Here, I'm using our generic arc length differential, ds, and the point is, is that we need to find out what this is. What is this for a parametric curve? We'll find that in a lot of these examples. We can express the integrals in the same way we did before. The trick is just to figure out what they are now in terms of our parametrized curve. So there's our resulting arc length. Then we're going to focus our attention a little bit on what this ds is. What is the arc length differential corresponding to this parametrized curve? What about area? Well, the area under this curve, so between the curve and the axes, is the integral, again, from x equals 0 to x equals 2 pi r. And what do we integrate to find the area? Well, we integrate over all of the heights. So we're integrating the y values with respect to x. Now again, for this curve, everything's in terms of t. So what we'd have to do is express these things. And of course, our limits of integration. So that, that, and that would have to be expressed in terms of our variable which is 
the parameter for our parameterized curve, we have to express that in terms of that variable t. That's what we're going to focus on first. We know the form that the integral has to take for either the arc length or the area problem. We now just have to figure out how to write it in terms of the parameter t. For the second case for the area, it's just a straight substitution. We need to figure out how to deal with the y and the x in terms of t, but we have how x and y are defined in terms of t in the parameterized curve. So it's going to be a substitution. And as for the arc length differential, again, we'll figure that out. So that's what we're going to go to now. We're going to figure out how to write these integrals in terms of the parameter. Okay, so let's just revisit some of the results we had and then write them in terms of our parameter t. So our basic assumption is as follows. We've got some curve which we've got a parameterization for. So x is given by some function f of t and y is given by some other function g of t. And t is ranging over this interval from alpha to beta. We're going to assume that f and g satisfy all the conditions that are required to make sure all these integrals that we're about to introduce actually exist. So for all intents and purposes, we're thinking of f and g as being really nice functions. They're continuous, they're potentially, their derivatives are continuous, so they're very, very nice smooth functions. So let's look at our first result. If f and g are differentiable and f prime of t is non-zero, then the derivative dy by dx, this is our straightforward derivative, the rate of change of y with respect to x, is given by dy dt divided by dx dt. So it's the derivative of the y function divided by the derivative of the x function. Now this is differential calculus right here. And so this was one of those examples that we studied in calculus one when parametric curves were introduced, how to find tangent lines to parametric curves. Here's how we compute the derivative and then we can plug in values of t to find the slopes of the tangent lines at those various points. So I'm just quickly reviewing how to do derivatives in context of parametric curves. Now where does this formula come from? It's not magic, it's really just the chain rule. So this is really just the chain rule here. How is it the chain rule? Well, if I want to find the derivative of y with respect to t, let's say, so y with respect to t. So y is a function of t. But x is also a function of t. So what is our chain rule here? Well, the derivative of y with respect to t is the derivative of y with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. That's the chain rule. It says to differentiate y with respect to t, we can differentiate y with respect to x and then x with respect to t. So we sort of transition through the variable x. And then just rearranging this, solving for dy dx, we get that dy dx is dy dt, and divide both sides by dx dt, and that pushes it down to the bottom. So it's really just an application of the chain rule. That gives us this result. Okay, so what about the next result? How do we find the area under a curve? Well, all these things written in blue are integrals that we introduced before, not in the context of parameter curves, but just in the context of finding areas, arc lengths, and surface areas in general. So how do we find the area? Well, we integrate from x equals a to x equals b of the heights of the function, so the y values, with respect to x. So that's that blue integral. That's what we've been doing all along, the integral of the function with respect to x. Now, in the context of the parameterized curve, what I need to do is write everything in terms of t. So what we do is we just make a direct substitution. So I substitute x is equal to, that's f of t. I'll also substitute wherever I see a y, substitute g of t for it. But when I make a substitution like this, I've got to make sure that I also replace the differential dx with the differential in terms of t. So there's my f prime of t dt. So when I make a substitution, this y gets replaced with what it is in terms of t, so that's g of t. And this dx 
gets replaced with what it is in terms of the differential dt. So that's f prime of d, dt. And so when we make a substitution like this, we also have to change the limits of integration. So if the lower limit was x equals a, then we plug in the corresponding t value for that x value. So that's what we're going to call t equals alpha. And then the upper limit of integration is the corresponding t value, which gave an x value of b. So that corresponding t value we'll call beta. And so there is our full integral in terms of t that represents the area. So again, notice there's a switch in the limits. Just want to draw this to your attention. The switch in the limits. It's worth pointing out at this stage that whenever we have an integral and the lower limit and upper limit values are just sitting there, those values are always corresponding to values of the variable next to the d in the integral notation. So dx, these mean that a and b are x values. Now we're looking at dt, so that means alpha and beta are the corresponding t values. And this is going to be really important because a lot of our integrals we're going to write in shorthand using the differentials for arc length, like ds, or we'll use dt, or dx, or dy. And we sometimes just write the integral like that for a quick um, memory aid in some sense, but we also want to make sure that we get the limits of integration correctly. So if we want to specify the limits of integration in a different variable than the variable that we have next to the d in the integral, then we would specify that just by writing the variable name equal to in the upper and lower limits of integration. So we'll see that in some examples that we do. If f prime and g prime are continuous on the integral alpha beta, and c is traversed exactly once, as t increases from alpha to beta, then the length of the curve is given by, well again, the integral given in blue is the one we already know. We integrate from x equals a to x equals b of the arc length differential. So this is our arc length differential ds. So that's the integral we know already. In the context of a parametrized curve, we can write it as the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of the f prime, so the derivative of x with respect to t, that's f prime, so the derivative of the x function squared plus the derivative of the y function squared, square rooted, dt. So how do we make this transition from variables involving x's and y's to the arc length formula involving the parameter t? Well, let's just quickly see how. And this is actually going to be also be used in the next one for surface area. So let's look at the arc length differential. So what is our arc length differential? Well, it's written above. It's the square root of 1 plus dy by dx, all squared dx. How do we turn this thing into an expression involving the variable t? Well, the thing to note is that dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, in terms of t is, by item 1 above, it's dy dt divided by dx dt. So what we do is we substitute this, so maybe I'll write this over here, substitute this into ds. So we have that ds is equal to the square root of 1 plus dy dt over dx dt, all squared, dx. And now I'm just going to do a bit of algebra in what's under the square root. So I can put them over a common denominator. I get a dx dt, all squared, plus a dy dt all squared. I still have that dx hanging along outside. Under the square root sign I have this dx over dt all squared in the denominator here. So I can pull it all the way out. And so it will come all the way out as a dx over dt 
but it's no longer squared because I've pulled it all the way out of the square root. So the square root of dx by dt all squared just comes out as dx by dt, but it's in the denominator now. So a little bit of algebra. Now I notice that thing on the end. I've got dx divided by dx by dt. Just rearranging that a little bit, we see that the dx's cancel. And what's left with is just a dt. So I can think of, I'm dividing by dx d, by dt, that's like multiplying by the reciprocal, by dt over dx. So the dx is canceled and we're just left with the dt. So there is our arc length differential expressed in terms of the variable t. It's a very nice one to remember. The arc length differential, ds, is the square root of the rate of change of x squared plus the rate of change in y squared, dt. And again, if you remember back to how we derived the formula for an arc length and where this arc length differential comes from, it comes from the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the squares of the two legs, the change in x and the change in y, so that's the rate of change in x, the dx by dt, the dy by dt, the square of those two things added together, gives me the length of the hypotenuse, and that is essentially the square of the arc length. So this is where it's coming from again, just to, to refresh your memory. If you don't remember that, then go back and rewatch the arc length uh, video lecture. Okay, so there's our arc length differential. That's precisely what is appearing here now. So the ds, we've just replaced it with what it is in terms of our variable t. The other thing to note is now that t is our variable of integration, our limits of integration better be in that variable. So these are the alpha and beta values that correspond to the x values of a and b. What about the area of the surface? The area of the surface, again, it's the integral, we recall this before, from before, it's the integral of 2 pi y, so here we're, into, we're looking at the surface being revolved around the x-axis, so it's 2 pi times the height, that'll be the radius of the circle that you get when you do the rotation, so it's 2 pi times the y value, times the arc length differential, times ds. And in this case, y is given by, so there's our y value, it's given by g of t. Our arc length differential in terms of t is given by this. And our limits of integration should be the corresponding t values. So again, let me just rewrite it out here. We're really just using the fact that this is the integral from x equals a to x equals b of 2 pi times the y value, since we're revolving around the x-axis, times the arc length differential. That's the general form that we have in all cases. In the particular context where we're dealing with the parametrized curve, we replace the corresponding y values and the ds values with the corresponding functions in terms of the variable t. All right, so again, I went through these in sort of perhaps excruciating detail, but the point is, is that they are all the formulas that we remember from before, all these things in blue, just updated now to be represented in terms of the variable t, the parameter of the parameterized curve. So let's do a bunch of examples.